record currently is that? I think this was one of my very first meets. This was the Viking Classic in Chicago. It's still one of my favorite trophies. How cool is that Viking? <laughs> we had some swords. I don't think it's super sharp. <laughs> but it is a sword. One, two, three, four. A couple daggers. Four and a couple daggers. Every medal I've ever gotten is on here somewhere. And then a bunch of these are from the Arnold Sports Festival. This was from Japan. I was inducted into the Women's Hall of Fame in 2013. It lights up. <laughs> Every time I broke a world record, Donovan got me a new license plate with the record on it for the back of my car. <laughs> um, so these are all my world medals. And I think it was in 2001 when I won my first bench press world medal and we had it um, framed and then I won another one and we had it framed and then I won another one and we had it framed and then we we're like this this is gonna be way too much so Donovan actually made these Which most proud of? Um, the Calgary one for sure because I came back after having hip surgery and Everyone thought I was done. No one even talked about me winning or even having a chance. Jen Thompson, the greatest 63 kilo champion of all time, is not going out without a fight. It's moving, it's moving, it's moving. And that's, that's why she's lift. Jen Thompson. That is Whoa! Jen Thompson. Wow! So that one was sweet, because, you know. Anytime you can prove somebody wrong, it feels good. Jen Thompson does it again. That's how you become a legend in the sport. When I met her, she was like a 110 pound skinny cross country runner from high school. And uh, the first time she lifted, she couldn't bench the bar for sets. So she had to do dumbbells because she would get trapped under the bar. I thought I trained hard, but no one trains like she trains. It's impossible to train as hard as she does. There's no real secret. It's hard work, it's determination, it's having a good tribe behind you. It's making it a priority, making it part of who you are. It's not just a hobby, it's who you are. Sport of powerlifting is unique in that it's for everybody. No matter your size, your shape, your gender, your age. You can start anytime and achieve success. When I first started, it was still very taboo to find a woman in the free weight part of a gym. You were like a weirdo, so. <laughs> Which is a lot of stares. Um, people would leave or people would just sit there and stare. Yeah, well once I start out lifting them. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> then they just get up and go. <laughs> but you did. You felt like you were always being watched, and you could tell when you look in the mirror. You could see men still would say like, "You're looking too manly. Your muscles don't look so good on you." Randomly come up and tell you that. I mean, if you would have asked me in college, you know, do you think you could be a world champion powerlifter one day? I would have thought you were crazy. <laughs> like, no. So weight training class, uh, I have two of them. Yeah, I think our weight room is probably as big as this room. It's a little bare bones, but we make it work. Correctly, she'll correct you. She's not like criticizing, but she's like, come on, you know you can do better, so she's like constantly pushing us. I have some kids that are athletes, some kids that just wanted to get in shape. I use a lot of the programs I created with them. So they're getting to be great powerlifters without really knowing it. <laughs> What rules does Coach Thompson have for a training session? Try your best. Fail with good form. I think just be realistic with your numbers. So um, we start with no phones, so they have to talk to each other, they have to communicate, and then I'm very hands-on, like this is how we do it. She is hard, makes me feel really work hard in here. She definitely doesn't let us do the bare minimum. Even on warm-ups, they have to pay attention, they have to spot and load, they have to help each other. Don't slam the weights. Don't slam the weights. I mean, I do. I'm kind of bad at that. After I hit like a PR, I'm... There's no, I can't do this. There's always something you can do or some way you can wait for it. It's not just a, a blow-off class. Like, they go in there every day working their tails off to get better. are determined to push ourselves to like greater lengths than what we thought we could do and like we're all just like trying to push each other to do more and to like prove to each other that we can do more than what we think we can do. I lift way harder in here than I ever did at home. I see their grades go up, I see their behavior problems go down. Some kids have had eating disorders and different things like that go away. Like, I mean extreme things. It surprises me. Like all the time, I'm like, holy cow, like it was just lifting weights, but it has such a profound impact. Now we're going to deliver meals to elderly people that can't really care for themselves very much. So we're going to the barbecue place to pick up uh, some takeout meals. And then I have, uh, I think I have six places. I started doing it during the pandemic when we had no, when everything was online school. Mm -hmm. And I was looking for something that I could do with my teenage boys to kind of get back to the community, but it'd still be a relatively safe thing to do. My mom always told me that you should help others and you feel good and you feel pretty good when you help others. <laughs> Mostly for my boys too, I wanted them to see, um, I guess more how fortunate they are and how other people have to live and how they rely on people to help them. Um, I think they were, were not aware that we had so many people in our immediate area that needed this kind of help. You kind of live in your own little bubble, you know, with your neighbors and your friends. So I don't think they realized like just down the street people were struggling from where they live. Life lessons, all life lessons. What Jen lives by is you gotta be 95% at your best. 95% of the time. And you can only goof off or take time off 5%. So when you train, you gotta be at your best 95% of the time. When you eat, when you sleep, when you vacation, that's what you do. Like you have to get it in. And so she lives by that. You can't be a world champion two hours a day in the gym. It's every day, all day long. And 
you got to be 95% of your best, 95% of the time. Well, it's, it's a lot. It's two, two and a half hours of going all out and <laughs> pushing yourself beyond where you thought you could go. Like always trying to get extra, always trying to push more, getting all the work in, never quitting, never missing, um, never saying, okay, I'm done for the day, I'm too tired. The last set of every workout or every exercise is to failure. The theory is, is that you basically use up all the muscles that you normally use and you have to get into some reserves that you don't normally typically get into and that's how you can build a lot of mass and strength. If you come into our gym, it's a competition. If you're there lifting, you're competing against us. And we design workouts for competition, the AMRAP workout. It doesn't matter if you're benching 95 and I'm benching 315. If you do more reps than me at your prescribed weight, you win. You got, what, four more weeks of Yeah. We make it a competition because it's what drives people. She's the most competitive person you'd ever meet, and you just don't know it because, you know, she's oh. constantly smiling. She's the person who lights up a room, but, like, deep down, there's a fire that just, just cooks. Thompson, family rule is, everything you I used to think like, if I can go into my pain tolerance as far as she can go, then I can be that good. And then you find out her pain tolerance is like ridiculous. Squeeze. Squeeze. <laughs> Blows out her knee, doesn't take anything for pain. Gets hip surgery, nothing for pain. Ice will take care of it. She in fact refused the prescription from the orthopedist who got mad, you gotta take this. She's like, I'm not taking that. Nothing. Nothing. Ice. Oh. I think the biggest thing is what she's done to give back. You know, how she inspires everybody else. I mean, I told her a long time ago when she started like putting stuff online and started doing seminars and started training videos, I said, you're just teaching everybody how to beat you. And she said, but I didn't start this way and I want to make it sure that all these young girls, all these shy girls, all the girls who presume they're not tough can get tougher and weightlifting did that for her. I mean, she was a head shy, couldn't go to the grocery store, couldn't talk to people and weightlifting changed all that.
Weightlifting took her from someone who couldn't order food at a restaurant to doing seminars around the world. And for her, the more important thing than winning world titles is being able to have that impact on another girl. Some girl who's afraid to go to the gym can now go, and when she touches the weight, she can feel strong. I didn't want to get lost in being a wife and a mother. I wanted there to be more to me than just those traditional aspects of being a woman. I, I get bored easy, I guess. And one of the reasons I compete constantly is because you want to constantly have goals to push yourself. Otherwise, you would probably just come in and do the same set of three sets of five every single workout and never get better, and you would just kind of run through it, and it would be boring. You only get this much time here. You got to make the most of it.